Welcome back to the He's Wrong, She's Right podcast, the podcast for alpha males who talk shit about their wives behind their back and don't take the trash out. I'm your host, Andrew. These are my boobs, left and right. That's the best you could come up with, left and right? No. I came up with that just then on the fly. Mm-hmm. Rather, you know, I had to objectify you to be cool with the, with the bros. All right. With the alpha male crowd. The alpha male crowd. Yeah. Because I got one. Of, I got one of these. That means I'm supposed to sewer slide myself. Yeah, I'm. I'm not supposed to only have one. I'm supposed to have many. That's what they say. That's what the the twitters and the reddits and the alpha males. How many girls have slid into your DMs? Nobody slid in my DMs. Ever. Period. Yes, I think girls inherently, for the most part, maybe not all of them, know that that's a bad idea. That's just. Not just to slide into mine, but they're a little bit more conservative when it comes to that kind of stuff. They're desperate or they really want that specific dick that bad. Say I'm wrong. You can't because I'm right. Welcome. (laughs) Whale come. Whale come? Yeah. It's been seven seconds again. What were we doing? So on this episode where Andrew guzzles whale come. No, you do. We've already seen it. (laughs) You keep, you keep getting the stuff on your on your lips, your little bubbles. My little bubbles mm-hmm. from my hard kombucha, yeah. which speaking of, I had to drink hard kombucha to get to this episode. I drank one in the last one, The American Dream, and I've got a second one cracked open now. That I'm going to be sipping on. Podcast dog. Podcast Can I come dog. say hello? Because... Today's episode is, if I can unlock my screen, the mic is in the way. I thought we were going to read Twitter comments. Oh, we can get to that. That's fine. Drunk questions. I'm not drunk. I'm talking, well, we're buzzed or getting, uh, we being me, uh, I'm talking about having been drunk in the past. And you have to be coherent enough to be able to answer these questions. So, are you ready? These are these are questions. I'll show you the screen real quick. You're gonna show I... the screen. The camera's over. There. <laughs> I show the camera real quick, but I'm not showing his job. I'm not showing him because all of this is uh, new to him. I wrote these yesterday. All right. Have you drunk dialed anyone? No. You've never drunk out anybody in your entire life. No, why would I? Boring. All right, number two. Or do you want to do, you want to do a do over and I'll, I'll make up a story? No, I cool. no. All of this has to be true and honest and genuine. So that's fine. All right. Bye, dog. Have cheating rumors ever come up regarding you and a friend? What's a cheating rumor? Pardon? What's a cheating rumor? So either you or a friend were in a relationship, but did you appear to ever be close to a friend that was a girl who either they were in a relationship or you were in a relationship at a time and either your girlfriend or their boyfriend were like, "Mm, what's going on here? Okay, so tell the story. Well, I'm a beautiful, attractive, strapping young lad. Okay. And all of the ladies loved me and, you know, I had a car and my parents had money. So, so back when you always... were like 16. Yeah. And okay. even, you know, yeah. Cause I was thinking about like 21 plus here. I don't but know, okay. Probably some of it. Yeah. Okay. I mean, 21 plus or up until I turned 23, I was in the army. So okay. that kind of thing, like I, as we've already talked about, not only did I avoid the juicy girls, I also avoided the barracks bunnies. So. <laughs> okay so yeah there wasn't much of that to be had whatever you definitely had sex when you were in the army yeah i never said i didn't but i didn't ever do it with the barracks bunnies the like okay so like the the net the town bicycle the neighborhood bicycle whatever you want to call her or it um i was always going out of my way to find the ones that had been untapped potential previously quality pun intended there obviously you're so punny yeah it turns me on i know mm. i yeah. love your punny humor i know you do 
Mm. Yeah, untapped potential. <laughs> there we go. Shirt idea. Untapped potential. That would be something that like a straight edge person would wear. Like, I'm a virgin. I'm so proud. No. I got, untapped potential. I have that I have that other John Malecki shirt that says slightly above average in the Avengers font. Okay. Continue. Have you ever done anything you regretted while drunk? Of course. So tell the story. I had sex with somebody. And then I was like, woke up and I was like, no. Tell the full story then. <laughs> That's what funny. did she look like? Why did you go, no? Because, I don't know. She had a mouth, boobs, ass, a vagina. And then I woke up and her face wasn't up to standard. So You were disappointed in her face whole. I've told you multiple times I cannot be seen in public with an ugly person or i cannot be seen in public dating married to holding hands whatever with an ugly person i'm very vain i'm cool with being the ugly person but i cannot be seen <laughs> what so that leads to the next question have you ever lied about having sex with somebody yeah because it's embarrassing i'm just i'm literally speechless <laughs> over here have you no are you sure? Yes. Okay. Have you ever confessed your love or like for somebody while you were drunk? You never were like, secretly I've crushed on you for years. I'm so glad this is finally happening. Have you ever even loved or liked anybody? You. Besides me. Myself. Okay, so he gave a, a lot of self-love <laughs> prior to meeting me. Got it. Got it. So the daily jerk off. There you go. Okay. Have you ever gotten into a fight while drunk? Probably. All right, tell the story. I don't know. Which time? All, all the stories. Tell all the stories. I, which one? I, the best. Choose the best one. I don't know. Somebody you're asking me these like loaded weird questions and I we've already had this conversation that without actually having the time to think about it, I Right, but kind of the way that kay. you hide everything for an entire week until you, we're on a podcast and you're like, I have to show you, you this. You've already established that I have a reputation for having a poor memory. And then you want to ask me on the spot to come up with details. That's not gonna work with how my brain works. I have to be able to think about it. And dead air kills a podcast, so you're asking the wrong questions at the wrong time. Have you ever woken up in a stranger's bed after getting drunk? Yes. Goes back to what, question number three? No. I've told you this story about Auburn. Okay, yes. And it wasn't their bed, though. It was couch. Couch, but... yes. So tell that whole story to the podcast. Okay, so... This is a long story. Yes. Yeah, so if you want all, do you want, do you want the, the whole shebang? Okay. Tell the whole shebang. So my brother and his friend. Younger brother, right? Yeah. I only have younger brothers. Oh, sorry. I meant the youngest brother. No, Aaron. Oh, I'm sorry. I thought it was, uh, no. what's his face no. in Texas? Aaron and his friend, Matt. Uh, Matt's family owns an excavation company in Michigan. We drove past it. Okay. When we went to the Chinese restaurant on Christmas. Mm -hmm. um, that was Christmas Day, right? Yes, that was yeah. Christmas Day. It was the only place that was open. Yeah. There was a blizzard two years, year and a half, whatever ago. Two Christmases Christmas ago. Two Christmases ago. Um, they have family members or somebody in their immediate family, I can't remember, uh, were Auburn graduates. This is when Cam Newton was playing there. They won the national championship that year. Um, they flew down on their private jet, brought my brother with them, scalp tickets. We would go out there and party anyways, because fuck being in Columbus. It was like an hour away from base or something? 45 minutes from okay. Fort Benning. Or 45 minutes specifically from where I lived on Fort Benning, not from the entire, because part of the installation is much right. closer. Semantics. Yeah. Carry on. Um... <clears throat> So we drove out there. That's where we'd always go, or that's where my group of friends, the guys from RTB, would go, including Mart and the uh, Schwark, who I told you, and he's part of the story, and the guy that is in prison for attempting to kill the person in the parking garage in Atlanta. That's a whole other story for another day. I've got some stories. Just mm -hmm. they typically are just like me as an observer. 
like standing in a room full of soldiers doing cocaine. That's what he is pretending to say, so he's not implicated. No, it's true. It's true. Okay, carry on. Um, so we get off work, off our 36 hour shift, go and shower. I pick up Desi, Andrew D. Simone, who's riding with me. That's the one that's in prison, uh, from his house. And we drive out there in my Mustang and my brother and his friends, they land at the Auburn Opelika, o- Auburn Opelika airport. And of course I didn't even know Aaron's friend at that time. I knew that they went to high school together, but Aaron went to a different high school than I did. He left my high school to go to a school in Michigan so that he had a better opportunity to track scholarship, which he did end up getting. And they, so they flew and I'm asking my brother, you know, like when they landed or whatever, cause he's texting me or calling me or whatever. And he's like, oh yeah, this is our tail number. And we're like looking out there and I'm like, you're lying, dude. Like you're, I'm, I'm thinking that they're going to pull up in like a Cessna, right? Like a little dinky plane that like, Everybody that is a pilot like posts videos and they learn how to fly in that little dinky plane with, you know, single single propeller, like a two propeller, little V plane, biplane, whatever it's called. I don't know much about planes, so you guys can fucking argue about that yourself. Um, but they pull up on the tarmac, and this is, you know, it's a smaller at the time. Maybe it's changed since then. It's a smaller airport, and actually, I mean, Wilmington has this. It's on the other side away from the normal terminal, it's called Air ILM. So it's like a private terminal for private jets. You don't go through the regular security checks and stuff. And so they pull up and we're like looking out the sliding glass door and I'm like, there's no fucking way they're on that big ass plane. Nope, sure enough, door drops down, they walk out on the tarmac and there's my brother and his rich friend's family. And this is no offense to you, Matt. It's no offense, you guys are very well off and yeah, their excavation company is very big. Told you I saved his grandma's life one time after the army. Yeah, they they attributed it to uh, God putting me in the right place at the right time. Like they did something nice for me and then I happened to be where I needed to be in the hospital. I just happened to be working and she was a patient. I recognized the name. And I was like, oh, I think that's somebody I know. And so I took that room. I don't think I actually really saved her life. I think we did in general, but it was just the coincidence of it all made it seem probably more than it was. So back to the drunken night. Yeah. So they get in their chauffeured Escalade and we drive out and we park. They pay for the the parking stuff for us, park with them outside of the stadium. And we walk up and Matt's dad walks off. And this is the first time I met him. So he's like thanking me and my buddies for service and this and that. He walks off and he comes back like 10 minutes later and hands us tickets for the student section. And this is a big game. Georgia, Auburn, big rivalry in the SEC. I'd never been to an SEC game. And so he just hands us tickets. He's like, thank you for your service. He literally walked off and scalped these. T- At the time, this is probably way more expensive and probably sounds cheap right now, but he spent $2,000 on four tickets for Aaron and Matt to sit with me and Andrew. Yeah, and then they sat in like their normal general seats somewhere else in the stadium. Fast forward, game ends, we leave. They go right back to the airport, get back on the plane, fly back. We go to meet up with my buddies or the rest of our buddies from RTB. Uh, We always parked in this checkers parking lot because we knew the manager or something like that. One of somebody that we were friends with like knew them. So they're always like, yeah, you can park right here in our parking lot. Otherwise you'd be towed if you didn't have permission. Gotcha. And this is like the main strip. So, all the strip clubs were nearby? No, no, no. All the clubs, clubs, no, all no. the bars? Th- this would be like if if UNCW had a college football stadium and College Road, US 40, was turned into a one-way street to take traffic away from the stadium, that's the equivalent. It's called Gay Street. I can't remember what the cross street is, so somebody can look this up and find the checkers I'm talking about. But all the bars, yeah, restaurants, everything is right there. So we park, and... There's an officer, so this is, we haven't even been drinking yet, sitting there, and Desi's unloading his revolver. I don't know why he was unloading it. He's unloading it, and he's putting it in the glove compartment. And I overhear these people arguing in the car in front of us. They're coming to the intersection. There are four or five cars back from the intersection. There's an officer in the intersection diverting all traffic away from the stadium, so turning 
a four six lane road that's two directions into one direction to move everybody out. They were waiting to either go through or turn or something. And I hear these people screaming. Are, they're specifically this guy screaming at this girl. Turn off my car, turn off the radio and everything like that. And we're sitting there, we're listening, and they're right in front of us. So there's my car, sidewalk, their car. Listening, I mean, he's just screaming, berating her. She's visibly crying, this and that. There's another couple walking down the sidewalk. And the guy is like, hey, chill out. Like, there's a cop right there. Just fucking take it home, right? Do do that at home. Don't do that right here, right now. You're clearly probably drunk and shouldn't even be driving. So dude in the driver's seat jumps out of the car, pissed off, goes around the back of the car and swings to try and punch the guy that's just told him to chill out. He misses because he's drunk and because the guy ducks his girlfriend standing behind him Catches her right in the fucking face. Knocks her fucking flat out. So we jump out of my car. Desi pulls out his empty fucking revolver. <laughs> gets this guy down on the ground. I go over. Luckily, I, we had our aid bags, or I had mine at least in my trunk. So I go over, I check on her. She's fucking out cold. Dude is fucking freaking out. Has no college student, right? And I, I don't know what his beliefs or whatever are, but had completely frozen freaked out has no idea what to do the guy that just tried to hit him is down on the ground face down pissing his pants oh poor guy yeah desi's got him at fucking gunpoint we're in another state right so i don't even know if he was licensed to carry there or not but in desi's defense he did have a map in his office in his house with pins in every state that has reciprocity for his oh carry God. license <laughs> yeah so he was he was very meticulous. He was very yeah. well prepared with his <laughs> empty gun. Yeah. Somebody's, somebody's going to listen to the story and they're going to be like, oh my God, yeah, I fucking remember that. So all of this happens. And, you know, I, I tell the guy, the boyfriend, I'm like, just go over there, get the officer, tell him to call somebody, tell him to call the ambulance, get them over here. And so he runs over or walks. I can't even remember. He's like, he's crying in fucking tears. I grab my A bag. By the time I walk back over to her, there's like kind of a small crowd forming over there. This is pre-smartphones. It's still like the BlackBerry era, so it's smart-ish phones. Nobody's like recording or live streaming. Um, I'm like checking her out. She's got just a laceration on her head. Big fucking contusion on the back of her head from smacking the fucking sidewalk when she fell. And she's kind of like coming to. She's delirious. So I'm just, you know, stopping a little bit of bleeding. It wasn't terrible or anything like that. And the officer comes running over with the guy. The guy like went to the back of the sidewalk. But as the officer left, traffic kind of started wanting to do its own thing. And all four or five cars over in front of the guy had started moving. Desi got cold feet because he's sitting here holding a fucking guy at gunpoint. So he holsters it, lets the guy up. The guy jumps up real quick, jumps back in his car. And we're pointing at him saying, hey, that's the guy, that's the guy, right? Like, hey, we're not the ones, that's him. He gets in his car and the cop's trying to tell him to stop and he fucking runs over. He doesn't run him over, he hits him. But I mean, like, he's like 10 feet away, he just mashes the gas and he hits him, rolls off the hood, breaks the mirror. So he comes over. Fortunately, we had already gotten the plate. We already had the vehicle description. The officer's already seen it. He already knows what's going on. And like within, I don't know, 30 seconds, we were swarmed with officers on horseback, motorcycle, bicycle, foot. We had SUVs coming out of the fucking woodwork, cars unmarked, everything like all flying in the checkers parking lot. And uh, yeah, they ended up catching the guy because, I mean, super congested traffic. He wasn't getting very far to right. begin with. He fucked up all around right. with all that. And, he was in pure panic mode. Yeah, yeah, yeah. And so they talked to us. They get our statements. We talked to it like some reporter who happened to be like in that area and the police confiscated Desi's gun. Alabama has what are called crime of passion laws where they confiscate your firearm or whatever. If it was part of, you know, even self-defense, they'll take it just in case like you're still heated. They don't want you to go into something else and be like, I'm ready. You but know? then he could get it back after. Yeah. 24 hours. Gotcha. He had to wait 24 okay. hours. So. And this is a Saturday, of course, so he's not getting back on Sunday. He's going to have to make a whole right. trip back out there. Understood. So they take it. It's no big deal. 
they let us go and we're like all right let's go get some drinks like everybody else finally showed up at this point we go walking around you know all the bars hitting all these different spots there was one i think it was called the vault i think it was one of the places that we went to it was like an old bank it's kind of like Merchantson building where they have the in the poor uh it's called poor right poor tap room yep poor tap room and i think that's a franchise so they probably have one of those places in that area but mm. big like bank vault you know inside and cool little location went to some other places i don't really remember most of them and i remember leaving and everybody wanted to go get food but the the implication was like everybody was just gonna like sleep in the car because none of us none of us knew we were gonna drive or all of us knew we weren't gonna drive none of us had any other place to stay or anything like that how old were you at this point this was 2010 so it was right before i turned 23 it was 22 and your plan for the night was to sleep in your car yeah i think i don't know i don't remember i was already drunk by this point okay carry on with the story please so we were all supposed to leave and I was fed up with whatever the last place we were at was. And I walked out and there was a Jimmy John's across the street and I walked over there and this was like, we're talking like two, three o'clock in the morning. And I think they had just either closed or something or they didn't want to serve me. Or I, I don't even remember all the details because I was that fucking drunk. Right. And you were like, just give me a fucking sandwich. No, no, no. I ended up just sitting outside and I fell asleep like, Head down, and it's one of those uh, one of those outdoor tables. I have like it's like the metal mesh grate. So people thought you were homeless. I don't know, no, because it's a game game weekend. Like they probably knew it's just fucking some shit faced fan or student that okay couldn't, carry on didn't get their sandwich or whatever. So I'm thinking that I'm waiting for my friends and everything. Nope, everybody nope. left you. Yeah, they had gone back to their cars, and these girls come up and they check on me and they're like, "Hey, are you okay?" I'm like, yeah, I'm just waiting on my friends. Like, I don't think they're coming. <laughs> I'm like, everybody left you. Okay, I'm like, well, my car's over there. You know, I just need to walk in my car. They're like, no, 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 you can, our apartment's over here. That's the last that I remember was that part of the conversation. That's what he likes to say, but we all that's, know what happened next. No, we the, all no. know what happened next, but he likes to say that at that point, his memory ends. <laughs> And he falls asleep in their apartment yeah. on supposedly the couch it might have after been, he's finished in the It might have even been the places. floor. It might have even been the floor. Whatever. But all, Whatever. I remember. We all know you're lying. I remember waking up to one of the two girls cooking breakfast, wearing nothing but her panties. Mm-hmm. See? So I did wake up thinking that something happened. Because mm -hmm. I'm mm -hmm. laying there on the floor on the couch whenever it was, and I'm like, well, back to my Mm -hmm. you had a good old time this is not my car you had a good old time boy i have no idea what's going on mm -hmm. and then the other girl walks out and she's handing her you know little baggy shirt so she can put it on and they give each other a little kiss mm -hmm. and then they so you had the night of your fucking life and you supposedly can't yeah. even remember it and they're like oh you're awake and i was like you must be tuckered out after yeah, a full night. Sorry, I don't know who you are, or how I got here, but I apparently feel like I still have all my organs, so I think mm -hmm. I'm okay. <laughs> I don't, I don't feel cut. I don't feel any sutures. Mm -hmm. I guess this is You're real just life. Well spent. Yeah, mm -hmm. maybe that's when the simulation started for me. Uh, walked back to my car to find Schwark, and I can't remember the other guy that was with him, Menendez or something. I can't remember his fucking name. Um, in his Jeep Grand Cherokee with the doors open. Short and Short's a big guy. Like at that time, he was like the size that I am right now. Mm. So he's in his Jeep Grand Cherokee with like one leg hanging out the door in his body. Just and he's fucking snoring. Like he, 9 a.m. in a checkers parking lot. Yeah. Does he does he because he couldn't get into my car because I had my keys still. Mm -hmm. He was laying in like the the trunk, just laying in there, no blanket or anything like that, no nothing, no pillow to use. <laughs> it's just laying there. And so I wake them up and I'm like, hey guys, uh we can go. Jump in the car and drive back. Yeah, supposedly he doesn't remember what he did with those girls, but whatever. Don't you think that if I had a tansy like story that I'm going to pause this before they start barking. One attention speed. 
I'm unpausing this while you're talking. When attention speed? You're talking to the dog. Oh, sorry. Okay, so visit he's wrong, she's right dot com for stuff and content and things. Stuff and content. Find bonus content on Patreon. Click on the. Do we have bonus content already? Yeah. Oh, I don't know. I don't even know where I paused it at. So they're gonna be like, "What? This is the weirdest jump cut ever." It's not actually a jump cut. The dogs came down here and started barking, and I paused it before you guys got an earful of dog bark. Bork bork. Do There's... you prefer to get drunk before sleeping with somebody? No, no. Numbs it and then can't get it up. Whiskey dick. There's a, that's why that term exists. Okay, but not talking to you, Google. <sighs> okay. Google wanted in on the action. Yep. All right. Have you ever tried to hook up with a friend or a friend's date slash crush? No, but they have. Okay, tell that story. I don't, I don't, I'm putting my phone down. Tell the story. I don't remember all the details. Oh, yeah? You've never Can, fucked a friend? No, I'm, I'm saying that when a friend was out with their, and I was like the third wheel or fifth wheel or whatever, their person was like leaning on me and like rubbing on me and i was like no hey, baby, you yeah and i'm like nope nope all right tell the story that's the entire story what that's the lamest story ever that's the story lame okay what's the most embarrassing experience you've had while in bed waking up and not wanting them to be in my bed okay or tell be that story. in my bed we already talked about this Tell the story. I went to a wedding because my friend asked me to go. And then we went back to our other mutual friend's house and hung out in the hot tub and pool with them for a little bit. And then went back to, this is 2015, I think. Yeah. And then went back and had sex. And then I took her home and then... That was that, because I was like, nope. Have you ever passed out drunk while having sex? Never. Never. That you remember? Never. Have you ever accidentally sent a dirty text to the wrong recipient? No. I don't know. You were texting somebody the other day, and you were like, oh, shit, I didn't mean to send it. Obviously, it wasn't dirty, but I'm just saying, like, mistakes do happen when you're texting, and you can hit reply to somebody that you were... We were having... We were having like parallel conversations we were talking about business stuff no no no. i just happened to be the wrong i'm just using that as an example obviously that wasn't dirty or anything but mistakes do happen the answer is no supposedly and and your conversation is pinned at the top of my text so there's no i always know every time i can just click right i'm talking about before me no just to be clear i was not asking if you're texting somebody else no Never have. Oh my God, lay. I don't make mistakes. Okay. <laughs> have you ever given somebody a fake number or ditched them while on a date? Yes. Okay, tell the story. Don't remember. Oh my God, so lame. You're asking. I, we've we've had this conversation already twice, just on this episode. Fine. Then, since that was my last question, I will tell my story pertaining to that. Okay. Okay, so I got set up um, shortly after my separation, and it was a blind date. Had no idea what this person looked like or anything. Sure. No, completely blind date. Who goes on blind dates? It was my first and only blind date. Okay. Um, All I was told was that he was nice. Okay. That sounds like a serial killer. Losing to her. Yeah. So, anyways. Um, I knew pretty much nothing about him. Um, anyways, so it was maybe seven minutes into sitting across from each other at this restaurant and then the table was pretty small. So we were pretty close to each other. Like this? Um, only we were directly across from each other. Not next. What's the restaurant? Rocco. And it ruined Rocco for me for a long time and you, you told were... me you'd never been there no I did not I said it's my favorite restaurant and I hadn't been back do you guys believe that... her should I forgive her 
I literally told you it was my favorite restaurant. I didn't say I'd never been. I took you for the first time there. I took you. Whatever. Whatever. I told you about it. I said that it was my favorite restaurant. But that, this date ruined that restaurant for me. And I had not been back since until we finally went together. Was it too ugly or too nice? Oh, or it too was. too not nice? Okay, so it, it was two parts. First, seeing him for the very first time, he literally looked like Cash, age 30 years more. So Cash was three years old at the time. And he was 33. And it literally looked like Cash, 30 years plus. It was so creepy and eerie and just already I had this like unsettling but feeling. But he's nice, Nona. Right. But he's nice. And then the next seven minutes were this like he was like crawling across the table and just like i was so I, un- was in the bathroom, I was so unnerved and i just like at first i was like well maybe i'm getting pranked like he's just you know this is a joke right this it's this isn't really happening and i just kind of like looked around like no it was really happening and it lasted about seven minutes because that's all i could tolerate sure. didn't even order anything like hadn't even ordered a drink at this point. I get up and I walk to the bathroom and I'm just like, I'm so sorry. You know, I need to run to the bathroom real quick. And as you know, the bathrooms are in the back of the restaurant. So it's not like I could, you know, duck and run from the bathroom. But of course I take my purse with me. And you know, that's not normal for me. I always leave my stuff at the table because, you know, if I'm comfortable with the person. I don't know that because I don't, I'm never not with you when I'm not with you. So I don't know that. Okay. Okay. Um, If I'm comfortable with the person. I'm never with you when I'm not with you. (laughs) Getting left at the table. Um, I'm never going to take my purse into the bathroom. That's just gross to me. I don't take my phone into the bathroom. Anyways. So I did it intentionally so I could get a call from the babysitter. So, of course, I come back out and I'm oh my gosh, I'm so sorry. I need to go. Thank you so much. This has been lovely. And of course, you know, I'm just, I'm, I'm, I I don't know how to like nicely tell somebody. I hope this somebody, person watches this. I, I don't know how to nicely tell somebody that they're fucking creepy. And there was a dude at the gym the other day. But I swear I've seen his face before, but I don't know where. And he kept looking at me. And all I could think was, I wonder if this is one of her stalkers. Oh my gosh. Uh, well, anyway, so that is my story of how I ditched somebody <laughs> seven minutes into a date. Oh, Didn't dude. even give them a fair chance because they came off so creepy. Like, I did not think that I was going to survive the night. I thought he was for sure going to, like, chop me up and save me in his freezer to I, use later. I was supposed to pick somebody up one time. And I completely accidentally, not, I'm not, I shouldn't even say accidentally, conveniently, but not intentionally, didn't tell them what I drove. Okay. And so when they told me where to pick them up from and I saw them from a distance, I drove by. And then later I said my car broke down. You liar. Because you saw them and thought that they weren't attractive enough for you? Yes. Have you looked in the mirror? Yes. Your standards are entirely too high. Obviously, they're not. We're only together because of the pandemic. You can thank COVID for a whatever. We would have gotten together anyways. Whatever. But I would still be in shape. That'd be the difference. (laughs) You know, it's true. She knows it's true. My gym would have never closed after stealing my money. Yeah, and my gym would have never closed either. And I wouldn't feel squishy too. Well, you were paying $200 a month to go to Pilates and then just didn't go. See, at least I go around the castle stuff. But I'm like, hmm, yeah, I'm probably not going to go. So let me just pocket this. I did go. I went three times a week, but okay. No, there was a there was a point. Yeah, there was a point when you were going religiously and more than three times a week. But there was also a point when 
You were just paying and not going. Just because I didn't tell you that I was going didn't mean that no, I wasn't going. No, you weren't going. I would Are you know secretly if, tracking me? No, I would know if you came home with sweaty clothes or not. We've already had this conversation. I don't sweat during Pilates. I would know. <laughs> okay. I would know. I would know. Just like, just so, okay, here's, here's exactly how I would know. When you come back from the gym, the first thing that you do is you go take a shower. So you wearing gym clothes out of the house and then coming back and now showering tells me that you didn't go. No, yes. not with Pilates. I told you I don't sweat in Pilates. I do sweat when I'm lifting weights or doing cardio, but not with Pilates. Pilates is just like a deep inner stretch. Sounds boring for too much money. It's so good for your body, though. So you can do it for free. Absolutely. So you don't have to pay $200. I don't anymore. I know, but I'm just saying that you didn't have to. You could have gotten Great. This... That was reformer Pilates. I genuinely tried it. I'd always done Matt Pilates before. I and I was giving means. it right. I was giving it a fair chance. I'm sure that there are long term benefits to reformer Pilates over Matt Pilates when it comes to my terrible knees but ultimately two hundred dollars is not worth it and i'll just continue having terrible knees do you guys even know what she's talking about because <laughs> uh like 76 percent of our audience are men <laughs> so that's okay. changing though so I'm, I'm asking if they know what that means because i don't know what that means i mean there's a good chance that their wives have informed them as to what I've known for a long time that you went to Pilates and I still don't know what the difference in what you just talked about was the first time I ever heard that there were two different kinds of Pilates. Oh, okay. I've told you, you just haven't listened. No, yes. that's not how that works. Yes, that is no. exactly how that works. Absolutely not. I remember everything. I'm like an elephant. Says the man who couldn't answer three questions because you couldn't remember your stories because i just I shelved that shit in the archives and then it'll come up again later yeah as soon as we stop filming he'll be like oh yeah but there was this one time no, i'm just craving pizza right now that's all i'm thinking about well you're gonna have to save your pizza craving for tomorrow because we're having chicken fajitas with friends tonight that's in like three hours. So you're going to have first dinner and then go have second dinner and you wonder why you're 280 pounds. Absolutely. I'm back in the gym right now, though. I need to keep eating. Yes. In order to He make... went two times this week and that was the first two times this year. So. That's not the first two times this year. Yes. No. Because I was back at Muscle Max. And you went? Yes. I was under the impression that you didn't go. No, I did. I went. This year? Yes. Since January 1st? Yes. Okay. Okay. Whatever you say. I did. But now that I'm back at PCSP, more gym. My body's just very achy. More gym. And I'm very tired because I'm old. I'm old too. And I'm very tired you're as not, well. You're not the same old as me though. I'm only a year younger than you. Or like you a know, year and a half younger did, than you. Did you know that there's a, there's a meta-analysis study that says that people that perceive themselves as an older age are at higher risk of developing cancer. I've been saying for over 10 years that I feel like a 55-year-old woman. So, so you're going to develop cancer when you're older forever. And we just talked about fuck cancer and how neither of us had cancer, so we both jinxed it. I'm never going to die. I'm immortal. I sincerely hope you die before me. I'm going to, but I'm still going to believe that I'm not until it happens. Okay, well, I'm a realist over here, and oh. the idea of you on your deathbed indefinitely is just, I mean, the way that you are with a man cold, could you imagine if you had something serious? Oh, bend my whim. Take yeah. care of me. You know what would make, me, make my cancer stop, Nona? If you Blow suck job. my dick. <laughs> I knew that's what you were going to say. <laughs> Just swallow me whole. Make the cancer. Suck the cancer out of me. Oh, just bleed me dry with your mouth. Just yeah. guzzle me. Yeah. Oh, I need it. Who needs pain pills when you can have orgasms? 
I don't know. I mean, I sucked you dry the other day and you could not go for more. So, like, I think you would literally die. You just say you don't you want would to, die a happy you don't want man be, with a smile you, on your face. I was going to say you don't want me to die right, happy. Let's go in the bedroom right now, then. <laughs> Trying to kill me? Bleep that out for you. I'm going to bleep that out. What? You want that bleeped out, trust me. Okay. Okay. Trust me. I don't trust anybody, so. You trust me. I do not. Yeah, you do. That's why you love me. Because I'm beautiful. I tolerate you. There's a difference. Oh, no, I'm beautiful. That's why you love me, because I'm beautiful. <laughs> You do. You wake up every morning. You're like, I'm so happy to have such a beautiful, <laughs> loving husband. You're crazy. And his soft touch. <laughs> He's just so gentle. <laughs> You're delusional. Nah. So. So. You didn't plug anything. Well, plug all the holes, please. You plug them. No, you do it. Okay. America's Center of Excellence. America's Technology Center of Excellence. Uh, that one. Close. LeeMaxMedia.com. And for apparently all the Bob pictures, go to NonaPhelps.com. There you go. I don't do anything else. You just go there to look at my Bobs. And who are we? Oh, this is Andrew <laughs> and I'm Nona. No, no. And what? What is the website for the podcast? Oh. <laughs> I thought... We were going to Veteran Wiki. You can do that. That's where I was going next. Sure. Okay. And we have a nonprofit, 501c, veteranwiki.org. Oh, is... sorry. I'm sorry. I'm sorry. Yeah. I've had two it's drinks. important. Because there are other 501c, cat, uh, what do you call it, categories or identifiers or whatever the IRS and government says. So we are specifically a nonprofit 501c3 that's the good kind that's the kind we want to be for tax evasion <laughs> no you're not okay believe that too <laughs> just kidding <laughs> i do know an irs agent so just kidding look at her rolling her eyes anyways and where, and this where, is where they go to find us he's wrong she's right dot com there you go Find us on YouTube for 100 subscribers. We're going to give away a $100 Amazon gift card. We're almost there, apparently. You just have to be a subscriber and leave a comment. Oh, yeah, and leave a comment. That's right. Do they have to do anything else? No. Nope. Okay. If they tell their mom about the show, though. That's right, your mama. And your grandma for her cookie recipe. Mm, yeah. If your grandma comments explicitly with her cookie recipe on any episode, that's 10 points. Ooh. We should just put people's name in a hat. That's what we'll do. Okay. Literally, sh well, because you got that paper cutter. That's perfect. We'll print them out. Mm -hmm. We'll show everybody. Put a paper cutter. We'll do it right here on an episode. That way, it's not rigged. Okay. Put it all in a hat, all in a bowl. Mix it up. Pull one out. Read it off. We don't need any apps. We don't need to rig it. Yeah, right here, right here, live. Not live, but it'll be live enough. Live enough. The OG version of pulling. Yeah. Okay. Let's like, do it. It's like uh So share our podcast. What's what's that called? Share our YouTube channel. Powerball. There we go. Okay. Go ahead. Continue. No. That was it. Do we have any social media channels or accounts? I don't know. You're in charge of that. I don't know. Everything is at or whatever, depending on the platform. He's wrong, she's right, except Twitter. Because there weren't enough letters. Okay, what is it on Twitter? He's wrong, she's not. So on Twitter, you're the alpha male and your woman is below you. Yeah. But everywhere else. He's wrong, she's not is the same thing. Mm. Yeah. Mm. Yeah. Mm. He is wrong, she is not wrong. Yes, it's the same mm. thing. They know I'm right. Yeah, they know I'm right. Speaking of the alpha male, do you think Joe Rogan is leading that? You no. don't think so? No, he thinks they're losers too. He just wants really, to, yeah, but he wants them to buy his products. Ah, uh, so yeah. he's just pandering. There's um, there's they've been calling him the Kmart brand. Uh, the the 
one loser that I showed you a while back. His name's Andrew Tate. Like the he's like the leader of the douchebag brigade. That, How do I know that name? I just explained why because I've told you about. Mm-hmm. So he he's not the one where some girl like jumped off the house because he told her to and no that's the pool. dan bilzerian yes that's who i'm thinking of yeah, same kind of people he is i thought he was the leader of the no he's, he's been like killed off and been replaced he oh. cut off one head and another one spawns kind of thing okay yeah so the other the other losers are popping up with like as many followers as i have and pretending like they're some big shot but these because of technology today mm-hmm. It's very, very easy to reverse image search anything, anyone, I identify. Think, I think Andrew Tate sounds like the guy who raped the girl in the... Maybe, I don't know. But okay, so, anyways. So this, this uh, the, the Kmart brand, okay. as Shads and others on Twitter are calling him. Okay. Um, he literally hired prostitutes to take pictures with him. So whatever that cost him. But he tried okay. to... So, and, and one of the pictures. Have you ever done that? No. Hired a prostitute? No. Are you sure? Yeah. One of the pictures, the the guy, he literally looks like he's straight out of the 70s. Like the, his style. And they're like, did your grandma dress you this morning? No. He's got like three or four girls next to him. that like, they're not exactly attractive at all. Mm. Like, not even a little bit. Right. So he, in he fact, paid for the bottom dollar. In fact... In fact, I Not would I would wager to say that they're probably desperate uh, to get money from an older oh. guy. Yeah. Oh no. I don't want to. I don't actually think they're minors, but they were like teetering there. They hadn't had their first plastic surgery yet. They hadn't experienced anything yet. Yeah, you know, they were like they were very very young. They were definitely typecast for his photos. And uh, so they, but some of these guys, and I haven't followed because the USA thing blew up, but this has all happened over the last couple of days that this other, the Kmart brand guy, as they call him, which I'm still trying to figure out, please, will somebody tell me if something is, if something is the Walmart brand or something is the wish.com brand, what the fuck is the good brand? Like, what is the name brand that we're supposed to look up to? Everybody's like, oh, Walmart brand, wish.com. Uh, what's the other Timu? Mm-hmm. Like, if those are the bad ones, like what? What actually is the good one? Or are we just saying that all brands are bad? Because I'm on board with that, but I need to know. Somebody needs to answer my question. Somebody needs to be held accountable for starting this trend because I want uh, to know. My interpretation is like it's tied the OG laundry detergent versus whatever off brand is trying to mimic it. That's mm. that's how I'm taking it as. Mm. But okay. But okay, so even if you had the good brand, who is the face? Right. Of also... the alpha. <laughs> no, 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 not even yeah, just anything. Like who I mean, because you could say like within uh, a specific product category, right? Mm-hmm. You can have a good quality product. You can have a black rifle at one spectrum, and then you can have a Starbucks at the other spectrum. Good versus evil. <laughs> there can be, there can be a good version of Andrew Tate, the one that's not a bigot and polygamist and whatever other words you want to call him. Like there's, and there, it doesn't even have to be a spectrum. It can be black and white. You can just have this is, you're either good or you're bad. That's fine. But I want to know what is the good version and who represents it? You can't throw out, oh, Walmart brand so-and-so or Kmart brand so-and-so and and not at least say what the good version is, right? Well, maybe in the alpha community, they know who that number one is. No. No. And everybody else is trying to but, be them. So as so to backtrack real quick, the because of all the facial recognition and image search and stuff like that that's going on, they were able to track down some of these girls' profiles. And, and their parents? No, I don't know. I like I said, I haven't seen like the whole deep dive. 
these people were just, this is all like happening now kind of stuff. Okay. And yeah, they were like straight up prostitutes. I'm so proud to be an alpha male. I'm so proud that I had to pay women to be around me. Sounds about right. Didn't even get them on my own. I had to pay them. Alpha. Trademark. Okay. Okay. That's the end. That's it. Sorry to disappoint again. Goodbye. Bye.